This video will go over the cluster tool, otherwise known as the blob tool. A very effective tool for counting, for XY position, sorting based on parameters such as size, shape, and position in the image. It has an extremely fast processing time. So let's take a look at the categories that the cluster tool is in. Uh, as I previously mentioned, it also goes by the name of the blob tool. You can find that in the function list. You can find it in the position angle category under the cluster tool because it will give you an X, Y position. And then you can find it in the count category under cluster as well. So this is the tool that we're going to go with. So I'm going to add this to my program. If you have not registered an image already, please do so. So I'm going to set up my region is nearly the entire image. And as you can see off the bat, it has binarized the image. It has converted it to black and white. That black and white is based on this binary threshold. It has automatically set it here. But as you can see, if you are to move it, you can change what is seen as black and what is seen as white. So we're just going to go with the auto set. You can see that it is just detecting one cluster. As you can see the green crosshairs right there, which means we want to change our detection color to black. You can see that it's already detecting more. The detection count is a condition you can set. You can change the number, but for now it's fine. We can leave that at 30. The lower area filter is the smallest amount of pixels that will be determined as a cluster or a blob. If we just wanted to detect the large black circles and these circles right here that are outlined, we're going to go ahead and turn up our lower area filter to 200. As you can see, the small black circles are not detected anymore, but now these outlined circles are not detected as clusters. We can change that very quickly. We can fill the holes. This is filling any surrounded area. It's taking all of the pixels. So now the pixels inside of that equal 200 or more. So it's detected as a cluster. And then if we turn on the active border, it is going to ignore any clusters that are touching the border of the region. Now if we wanted to pass and fail based on just finding these four clusters or blobs, we can set our limits on the amount of labels. We can set our upper and lower limits to four. And we can go and as you can see right there, it's only measuring two labels, two clusters. And that is our good part. In this program, I'll show another example of setting up the cluster tool. For this one specifically, we are going to find just these tall, skinny blue rectangles and ignore all of the other colors, the other shapes within this image. And we want to count eight, like there are in this image. So we're going to go into our tools and take the cluster tool out of the count category to make the region nearly uh, as large as the entire image. Off the bat, you can see that it's only detecting four clusters. We're going to change our detection color to black. The first thing that we want to do is ignore these tall purple ones that are touching the border. As I showed in the last program, if you turn on the active border, it will ignore any cluster that is touching the border. So we're going to go into our detection conditions. We're going to turn on measure major minor axes and turn on measure equivalent oval. That way you can choose the upper and lower limits of what is determined as a cluster or a blob based on all these criteria. What we are first going to do is eliminate finding any circular object. 
So we're going to change the upper limit of roundness to 0.7. As you can see, we are already ignoring the circles. And then we want to change the equivalent oval aspect ratio minimum to 10 because we only want to find the very tall and skinny rectangles. As you can see, we are only detecting those now. And one last thing, just to make sure that we are passing the correct amount of these tall, skinny rectangles, we set our upper and lower limits at 8. Now, if I trigger, we are going to fail here because it has measured 9 of these blue rectangles. Now, for a little bit more realistic application, we will look at this image. Uh, containing what looks to be 24 tablets. We want to not only make sure that there is 24 in each package, but also make sure that none of them are broken, chipped. Just make sure that they're all there and it's going to be a good part when it gets into the consumer's hands. So we're going to add our cluster tool again from the count category. We're going to make sure that we get all of these inside of our region. And now you're going to see that it has binarized the image, but what we're going to do on this one is extract the color of the pills so that we can find those easily and ignore everything else. So if we change our color to color to binary, we can pick this pink. And as you see, the more you click on the pink, you can also click here on the widen it will turn yellow and that is the color that we are looking for. When I click OK here you can see that it once again has binarized and the white is the detection color. That's what we're looking for so you can see 24 of those here. Now something that we have to go in and do is change our judged label from specified to all because we want to measure each one of these and what we want to do is make sure that there is 24 and make sure that they're all there so first we can set our upper and lower limits to 24 and see if we are passing all of our parts uh, the correct parts and failing all of the bad parts so that one is failing because there is only a measured 18 but this one has some broken pills as well as this one and they are still passing. So what we need to do is set a judgment for the minimum area. The lower limit on the area is going to be 955 because that is the lowest acceptable size for these pills. So once we click OK on that and we start triggering through we will get a no good on the ones that are chipped. You can see in the raw image that we are failing these ones as well. So to summarize the cluster tool, it can also be found on the CVX under the blob tool, the very high speed tool that will find clusters of pixels that exceed a certain area set by the user. It's very good for position X, Y, and theta, for counting as well as sorting based on size, shape, and location, and can also be used as a position adjustment reference.